Hello and welcome back. So we still have a few things to do here, but uh, let's skip over to the payment system so that we're done with that first and then we can come back if we need to finish up with anything, especially uh, on the main admin page here, we need to have at least a few boxes here for a few statistics. And maybe if time allows, we can do the website backup. But for now, uh, we need to add a payment system so that when somebody wants to check out, they can actually pay via PayPal. So I'm going to use PayPal because it's common uh, for everyone. It's going to be easy for everyone to follow along as a result. But the, every payment gateway is simply an API that you can connect to in the same way that we are going to connect with PayPal. So the principles can apply to any other payment gateway because they are quite similar. So for a second, let's see how things are going to work. Let me try and illustrate this in paint here. So what will happen is we have our website over here and somebody is shopping here and then they get a pay now button somewhere here. So once they click that pay now button, what happens is that they are redirected uh, or sometimes a separate window will open for them to pay which is the PayPal window. So here we'll have a separate window here which is PayPal PP. So once we get to the PayPal window here they enter their details and click pay now. There'll obviously be a button somewhere here for pay now but then the important part comes in because at this point with PayPal we have to specify what is called a webhook. So it's written something like this webhook like us so. So what this is is a link that PayPal is going to access the moment uh, something happens in terms of payment. So this could be a payment has failed or a payment is successful or any uh, event really that happens with paying on your website, PayPal is going to send a response to that uh, transaction to the webhook here. So this webhook is simply a URL, a link to your website, which contains uh, PHP. So this uh, link or this page will not have a user interface because it's not going to be accessed by users. It's simply going to have PHP code that will process whatever information that PayPal sends. And this is how your website is going to know that somebody has actually paid, right? And then that information will be saved in our database somewhere in the DB, saved to the DB. And then uh, once the whole payment system is done, PayPal is going to redirect our user back to the page. We're going to specify another URL here where it's going to return them after the whole transaction is done. And then there they expect to see something like a payment successful or something, success or failed. Either way, uh, they expect to see something. So this, the way this is going to know if something failed or went through is it's going to check in the database and ask, do we have a transaction for this user at this moment? And then it's going to get a response. And then through that response, it's going to know what to show. Either it's a success or it's a failure. So hopefully this uh, rough drawing is going has illustrated the process that is involved here. So it's pretty simple. We're going to see how to do this uh, just now. Let me minimize this for a second. And the important thing here for now is to create a table that is going to capture that information. So let's go to our database here and create a table. I'm going to say new and make sure you're on the correct database. And this table is going to be called uh, payments. So it's up to you what you want to call it. So I'm going to put an ID there and we don't really know what columns we're going to have just yet, but um, obviously we're going to need a few like transaction ID, uh, 
what else? Maybe the date. So let's put the ones that we know we definitely going to need. So let's put a date. Obviously we will need a date for that. And then we're going to need a transaction ID. So we're just going to call that one trans underscore ID like that of some kind. And then we're going to have the row data. So we're going to just say row in there because we want to be able, as much as we can separate the returned data into columns like this, this process of adding the data into columns could fail. So, or we may miss out a lot of information. So it's always a good idea to save the raw information that you get into the database. Okay, so here in the row, I'm going to put text there. Transaction ID will be variable character because I don't really know the type of ID I'm going to get. I'll put that at 255. And this one I will put at date time and then I will leave this at ID int. That's okay. You can change it to big int. Uh, that's uh, entirely up to you if you expect uh, thousands, but still int is quite big. So let's make auto increment there and make sure that ID is primary key. And that's about it. So once we are done with that, let's just hit save. Okay, saving, saving, saving. Finally, we have it there. So where's the payment? Uh, there we go. Okay, so you could add an index on the date time but uh, and the transaction ID, but we'll leave those for now until we find out what real uh, columns we actually need. So once we're done with this, we can now uh, start our PayPal process. Now, obviously you need a PayPal account so create a PayPal account. And once you're done with your PayPal account creation, uh, let me open a new tab here. You're going to go to developer, developer.paypal.com. This is the developer section of PayPal where you get uh, information on how to integrate your system to PayPal. Okay, so once you are here, you can log into the dashboard. So provided you have an account, you can easily log in. Or if you're already logged in, uh, I think it will take you to the right process. So I created a dummy account here. And we're going to use that for testing. So create your account. And once you go to the developer applications. This is where you end up once you're logged in. Now, there are a few things here you have to notice. Make sure you're on my apps and credentials at, he, at, at the top here on the dashboard. And there are two sections here. There's sandbox and there's live. So when you do take your system live, this is what you are going to select. But for now, we're going to be in the sandbox. Now, the sandbox is a temporal um, environment that we can use to test whether our uh, payment system is actually working before we try to use it. So make sure you're on sandbox here and the advantage is that you can have dummy accounts where you can put in fake money and use that to transact while you test things until you are ready to go live then you can click here. And then next here we have this app name here. So the idea is that we have to create an app. Uh, our website is going to be considered an app of some kind, which we're going to create here. Once we create that app, it's the one that's going to connect to PayPal and access the payment gateway. So here you may have a sandbox account that's created for you already. So what we do now, let's create a new app because uh, why not? Yeah. Okay, so let's create a new app. We're just going to sh call it my coup eShop. Something like that. Now, this is entirely up to you what you want to write here. It doesn't really matter. And then um, you get to select a, uh, a business account to use here. Now, before uh, we go to this, let me go to accounts down here, sandbox accounts. I'll right click and just open this in a new tab so that we see where these accounts are coming from. 
So on this section for accounts here, uh, very slow internet today. Hmm. Having trouble finding that site. That doesn't help me much now, does it? Okay. Okay, quite the bummer here. So things are not working out. Uh, the internet is terribly slow today. Okay, finally we get there. Okay, so down here on the... Uh, this is the same uh, interface there, just on the accounts here. It's going to create some default accounts depending on what you are using as your email for this very account. Now you can create a new account here. So let's click uh, create account to add one more account here. Now you see this is what you have to select. There is a personal account and there is a business account. So you must create two of these. You must create a personal one and a business account. These are dummy accounts which you are going to be using. One will act as a buyer. The other one will act as a merchant or the one that is selling goods. So you can see here this buyer account and merchant account and then you choose your region and you create those two accounts that you need. Now you may find that you already have one that has buyer and the other one has facilitator. So this one is the seller, that's the business account. This one is the buyer, that's the personal account, okay? So once you are done with creating all of these, uh, then when you are about to create your new app here, you will have access to these accounts here. So let's ch just choose one that will be used as the one to run the uh, the app that we're creating. And then uh, Merchant, wait, move payments to seller as platform. Okay, so we're just going to select the first one here, Merchant, create app. So it's entirely up to you, you can, um, study these things and choose the options that uh, suit you best. Okay, creating the app and the app has been created. Very nice. So this is the app. Now the important bit here is the client ID right here. This is the text that we want because we're going to be using this text a little bit later. So I will copy this text into my text editor, new file, paste that there, that's the ID. Let me come back here again and uh, let's see. Okay, so we have an email, we have that, that's all good. Let's scroll down and see what else we might want to configure. Okay, so you can configure payment methods here, but I'll leave that to you. Now, the important bit as well is the webhook, which I was talking about here. Now, that is the link which gets all the information once we have uh, the user has paid. So that's very important, which we need to add here. Now, the problem is uh, we are currently on our localhost system and we can't actually give that as a webhook because it's not practical for PayPal to locate our, my localhost uh, system here. So which means we must open a live uh, online account. We must be hosted online for this to actually work. But for now, let's uh, forget about this for a second. We're going to deal with it in the next uh, video. The other thing here is the return URL which is the one that I talked about here. The URL over here that where, where the user will be returned to once they are done shopping. So that too must be on a live server because otherwise we can't go, we can't be redirected to, uh, to a localhost system. Okay, so, so far so good. We have created an app. All we need to do now is uh, connected to our system, but we must upload our system to a live server. Now, hope, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, fortunately, yes, that's the word. Fortunately enough, there is a free service here that you can use, which is uh, 000webhost.com. So they offer you free hosting 
uh, and you can um, with this free hosting you can have at least one uh, live account or one website which we can use as the system we can transfer our website to this online service so that we can take advantage of things like the uh, return URL and webhook etc etc so what I would tell you now to do is go to um, 000 webhost.com and sign up for an account a free account you'll be asked to verify your email address uh, make sure you use either a Google account or uh, I don't know if it's Google or Gmail Gmail I think that's what they accept or something like that but anyway just sign up and once you're done just go to my sites this is where we're going to begin from once you are here you are going to be asked to create a new site here so now the thing is um, they only allow one site to be created here at a time and I can't really see where to delete my already created website here so unfortunately I can show you the process of creating an account because it was automatic when I was signing up so all you have to do is enter the details that you're asked in that system until you create one website here then we can pick it up from there so if you have any questions uh, leave them in the comments below then maybe I can help you out if you get stranded on how to create one of these now this is not the only uh, free hosting service you can get on the internet so if you are comfortable with some other service <clears throat> excuse me that's okay you can sign up with them or if you have an actual paid hosting account you can use that even better all right so i'll see you in the next video where we continue and move our website to this location